A significant feature of the 60s was an optimistic faith in the power of the human intellect and an unprecedented collaboration between scientific and artistic groups. Nicholas Schoffer, being one of the best-known artists of the era, had a tremendous influence on future trends and is regarded as the father of cybernetic art. Schofer Miklos was born in 1912 in Kolacha, Hungary, a town by the Danube. He was raised here until he started his studies at the university. Schofer first studied law at the university in Budapest. Édesapja kérésére, aki miért percipiálta a jövőt, hogy művészetből nem lehet megélni, elvégezte a jogot, és a jogi tanulmányait Dicsérte állandóan, hogy a római jog, ami megváltoztatta az ő gondolkodás módját, az az árt logikai rendszer. Later he enrolled in the Academy of Fine Arts in Budapest. From 1936 until his death, he lived in Paris. He was a student of the National School of Fine Arts. He became known with the French version of his name as Nicolas Schoffer. His artistic activity was very complex. He dedicated himself to painting, sculpture, architecture, urbanistic, film, television, music, and cybernetics. In his spiritual world that was based on avant-garde thinking and the awareness of the artist's role in society, he switched aptly between the fields of art, science, and technology. In 1982, he became elected member of the French Academy of Fine Arts as recognition of his rich ouvert. Tökéletes szabad ember volt. Döbbenetes alkotó energia volt benne. És az alkotás folyamatában nem voltak súpulusai. Föl sem merült benne az, hogy ki hogy fogja fogadni. Megcsinálta, ami ő jónak látott, az mindenféle belső mérlegelés minden nélkül. Még művészet törteti példázatok sem kényszerítették kontrollra. Amikor én Major Mátéra hivatkozva elmentem hozzá, akkor egy ilyen új világ kezdődött, amikor beléptem abba a műterembe. Szóval mindenki törlődött, amit addig tanultam a szobrászatról. Így kezdődött. És akkor lett belőle szimpátia, később lett belőle tanár, diák kapcsolat, nagyon meghitt, pensőséges. Laktam náluk, kimentett az éhezésből, amikor már érezte, hogy fogytán az erő, és érte egy nagyon súlyos haj, egy agyvérzést. Hát akkor előléptem asszisztensnek. Építészetet tanított, és elfelé, és azt tartotta a legfontosabbnak, hogy az építészet szobrászat, az együtt kell megismerni. Tér ábrázolás művészete, az építészet is, a szobrászat is, és a festészet. A építészet a belső tért tartja fontosnak, az a funkció. A külső tér az automatikusan alakul ki, ahol az építész lehetősége véget ér, ott kezdődik a szobrász munkája. Mert a szobrászi a külső tér, amíg Moholi nem kezdett el belső térrel foglalkozni. És a, az is háromdimenziós, a festészet pedig humbuk, Seffer szerint meghalt régi, elavult valami, mert hazug is, csaló is, mert három dimenziót akar érzékeltetni kettővel. Cybernetics is an interdisciplinary field of science researching the general rules of regulation and control, information processing and communication. Norbert Wiener made a major contribution to its birth. Cybernetics investigates those dynamic systems that interact with the environment according to an adequate feedback loop. 
The system has an impact on the environment and the changes in the environment influence the operation of the system. This feedback loop is a fundamental characteristic of a cybernetic approach. The moment of historical importance in the course of Nicholas Schofer's artistic career was the introduction of the cybernetic principles in the art practice and the creation of artworks that react to signals from the environment. The two sides of the interaction with the environment in a cybernetic system are control and feedback. The system exerts its influence on the environment through effectors, also called actors. The feedback requires the detection of environmental signals with the aid of sensors. Due to the development of technology, control, and regulation, it has been implanted in the most varied forms. Mechanic control of the elements was taken over by an electromechanic and later by modern electric or electronic control. Meanwhile, the basic principles have barely changed. The feedback compensates the disturbing effects of the environment and enables the system to adapt to the environmental changes. Prerequisites are that the system should be able to detect changes in the environment and to receive and process information. In the course of the feedback output signals of the cybernetic system are redirected and used in unmodified or modified form as input signals of the same system. A common feature of the sensors used in technology is that the measured values of chemical, physical, or biological data are converted into electrical signals, which are further converted into numerical data, and in this form are processed from the computer. The sensors of the cybernetic sculpture titled CYSP-1 were microphones and photocells, which detected changes in the environment. The collected signals were processed by a computer, which from today's perspective seems utterly simple. The result of the conversion was a sequence of data to describe movements of the sculpture, which were carried out with the help of numerous electromechanical relay. <laughs> Nicholas Schoffer could obviously use only the effectors available on the level of technology in his times. Among the tools of his trade were electric motors dismounted from washing machines, hydraulic, pneumatic, and electromechanical components, moving reflective surfaces, flamethrowers, water cannons, reflectors, and laser light. Those artists who followed in the footsteps of Schoffer applying the cybernetic principles could achieve a more elaborate level only thanks to advances in technology rather than theory. The recent appearance of virtual worlds has expanded the range of possibilities by leaps and bounds. Nicholas Schoffer was able to predict, sometimes with stunning accuracy, numerous social and cultural processes that have been verified in the meantime. A művész fogalmakat alkot, vagy fogalmakra redukál, és a, ehhez a fogalmakhoz formát teremt. A nem művész kölcsönöz fogalmakat, és a természetet másolja hozzá. Schoffer reinterpreted, according to the spirit of his times, the most basic media of artistic expression. A tudomány és a művészet a világ megismerhetőségének két bázisa. Ez volt Schoffer ideájának a lényege. Alapfogalmakra redukált is ez az alapfogalom, ez a három, a tér, a fény és az idő. És ezeket anyagként kezelte annak ellenére, hogy azt mondta, hogy a művészet nek dematerializálnia kell. Tehát nem szabad anyagba zárni semmit. És így ilyen értelemben az idővel sem foglalkozott, mint múlandóságnak a szimbólumával.
Schoffer gave up the concept of modeling solid and static objects. He created space segments, which were distinct from each other and shaped with the use of material reduced to the minimum. Annyira simplifizálta a lényeget, hogy hosszú-hosszú ideig evidencia lesz egy Schoffer szobor. Lehántolt minden fölöslegeset a plastikáról. Az első nagy léptékű mű sorozata a térdinamika volt. The perception of space is transmitted by the effects of movements. The important feature of the structured space was less the tangible structure than the virtual space created through rhythmic movement. 1956 őszén kezdődött, amikor optikai rácsokat, perforált lemezeket szerelt fel a térdinamikai szobrokra, és az, azokon áthatoló fény, pláne ha mozgott, vagy a fényforrás, vagy a szobor, megmozgatta a szobor árnyékát a falon, és ebből jött az ötlet, hogy akkor jöhet a motor, és jöhet a fény. Tehát jöhet a térhez az idő és a fény. The timing of various events became a key tool in Schoffer's art. Programming cyclical events did not satisfy him. He defined the order of events, their occurrence and the duration of their effects strictly so that the observer had a constantly changing experience. The perception of events in the environment and their transformation into an aesthetically pleasing spectacle plays an important role in most of his works. Since computer programs exist, time has started to play a more important role in improving the aesthetic quality of artistic creations. Schoffer megelőzte a korát. A szobrász eszköz a véső volt, ezt is emlegette állandóan. A mai szobrászé pedig a számítógép. Since 1957, Schoffer dedicated himself intensely to the effects of light and their dynamics. He altered the space around the cybernetic sculpture through luminodynamic effects. Emanating from the cybernetic towers, it informs the observer, for example, about the time of day, about the weather, about the traffic in the city and at the airport, or about the stock market index. This dense information stream, this incredible pulsating aesthetic phenomena, highlights the urban metropolitan character of the city and is the symbol of the future. Schoffer predicted the phenomenon that is known and went down in history as the Information Society. Schoffer introduces in his theoretical writings instead of traditional music, sound structures that are constantly audible at an urban scale. He considered sound just like light as a source of information. However, the world of sounds is much larger than the range of musical clang. Again, Schoffer was a pioneer in this field. Besides artificially created sounds, he used the noises of nature as well. Another major achievement of this period was the use of electronic sound generators. The noise of the moving parts of the sculptures mixed with the cacophony of the city was the natural sound background of Schoffer's kinetic and cybernetic works. The sculpture titled CYSP-1 was built in 1956 being the first sculpture based on the principles of cybernetics, it could detect the intensity and color of the ambient light with the aid of photocells and observe the urban sounds using microphones. 
According to the program of the microcomputer in the sculpture, it converted the physical signals into electrical ones first and then into motion commands. It was able to move its parts and to change its location and to activate or stop the various mobile elements. The energy was ensured by rechargeable batteries located at the bottom of the structure. Before the first public presentation, the statue played a key role in a modern dance workshop. Maurice Bijard, the magician of contemporary ballet, and his company, including Claude Bisset, the prima ballerina of the Paris Opera House, danced in Chauffeur's studio, together with the cybernetic sculpture that reacted to their movements. Nicholas Schoffer's masterpiece is the plan of a cybernetic light tower for the Parisian district La Défense. However, the TLC has never been built. The lack of success had two reasons. Georges Pompidou, president of the Republic and the main supporter of the plan, passed away and the first oil crisis dried up the sponsor's financial resources. Its planned height of 370 meters exceeded that of the Eiffel Tower. It would have been controlled and operated by a central computer. According to the plans, the TLC would have collected a range of data provided by sensors placed all around the city. After digital interpretation and processing, these data would have affected the operation of effectors located on the tower. According to Schoffer's long-term intentions, similar towers situated around the world would have been organized in a web of cybernetic communication. The idea was almost an anticipation of the Internet of our times. Due to the effects of light, the optical size of the tower exceeded considerably the size of the steel construction. Schoffer wanted to express the superiority of intellectual values over material ones with this gesture. One possible way to go beyond the traditional boundaries of the visual arts is, for example, to reduce the limitations in space. In other words, to make the artworks mobile. Schoffer experimented even with this idea. The artwork entitled Scam 1 was a chronodynamic sculpture fixed vertically onto the chassis of a car. It was connected to the vehicle by a rotating platform. Due to his impatience, Schoffer created the structure that was rotating around a vertical axis long before the construction of the vehicle. So his creativity was not impeded by being forced to adapt to a prefabricated vehicle. His aim was clearly to create a bearing structure that would be in harmony with the sculpture. The moderate style of the car's framework matched the statue well. The realization of the plans drafted by the Renault company was financed by Dene René, a Parisian art dealer. The automobile cybernetic sculpture appeared on the streets of Paris and Milan, causing major traffic mayhem. Although the gigantic light tower designed for Paris has never been realized, smaller towers based on similar principles were built in different European cities and overseas. The cybernetic tower Kronos 8 was completed in 1982. It was built next to the central bus station of Kolecha. A Kronos alapvetése mindegyiknél ugyanaz. Ez egy sorozat. Az, hogy van egy szerkezet, a szerkezet sajátságosan aranymetszésben komponál, és ezeken vannak motorok, ezeken vannak tükrök, reflektorok, és ezek családokba szerveződve különböző feladatokat hajtanak végre. Úgy alkotta meg, hogy elméletben össze lehet őket kapcsolni. Előre megjósolt internet állózattal. Kalocsai Toronynak a Létrehozását én kaptam meg feladatként Seffertel. Minden elektronikus, ez a torony a világegyetem modellje, szimbolikusan. Very little information is available on the fountains entitled Hydrothermal Kronos. Unfortunately, 
They remained in the phase of planning and have never been realized. Néztük egyszer a francia televíziónak tudományos műsorát, ahol mutatták az Atlanti hátságot, ahol a eurázsiai lemez alácsúszik a amerikaira. Ez iszonyatos nyomás és hőmérsékleti különbség ellenére jön a tűz, jön a lába, jönnek a gázok, és buborékol minden döbbenetes erővel. Akkor szépen fölállt, elment, nem tudtam múlva, egy óra múlva kész terve volt, hogy vízsugarat lövünk föl magasra, abba belelövünk egy égő gázcsóvát, és akkor a gázcsóvának a hatására a víz gőzé változik, és a gőz, gomolyú gőzbe lézerfény nyalábokat tereztünk, és ez egy döbbenetes látványosság, és óriási hanghatással is jár. Szóval innen vannak az ötletek. The random control is constituted by a combination of programs designed by the artist and the reactions to the signals coming from the environment. The visual effects are accompanied by acoustic phenomena. The sensors are partly photocells and partly microphones. The photocells are used to perceive the light of the sun and the shadow, further to differentiate between day and night. The microphones listen to the noises of the environment that are converted and used to control the effectors. A significant increase in the performance of electronic devices has determined the main direction of development in the 90s. After the end of the last millennium, the rapid development of computer performance increased the speed of graphic data processing and induced a high demand for creation of virtual spaces in real time. Even this progress confirms Schofer's visionary abilities. The word metaverse was mentioned for the first time in 1992 in Neil Stevenson's science fiction story entitled Snow Crash. In those days, nobody would have thought that these ideas would become an everyday reality within a decade. In the virtual world of Second Life, one can live a life that compares to our real life. Anybody can satisfy his creativity, being able to build his environment, to design and create virtual objects. The appearance of virtual reality not only influenced the development of art, but also that of the technique. The industry is beginning to use these technologies. The most advanced media of cybernetic art use intensively in a very clever way the refined tools of computer science, sensors, and elaborated devices of display technology. The city of Kolecha in Hungary is welcoming visitors to the new museum at Nicholas Schofer's birthplace. The cybernetic tower Kronos 8 proudly reminds us of the groundbreaking career of the famous son of the city and the founder of cybernetic art. Schofer szerintem örökre aktuális lesz a kutató kereső művészetnek, művésznek a prototípusa.